process is intense. I mean, it's the majority of, of, of the process on these things is sanding. That's probably like 90% of it. So, um, and these paintings probably have like 15 layers of paint, which is, they're just, yeah. So that's a, you know, a labor intensive um, process. Do you find that you're painting the same color repeatedly or are you making shifts in the color as you go? Good question. I try to not have any of the two colors be the same. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that's a challenge that I, yeah, to try not to have any two exactly the same. So if there's a, you know, a blue, they're all hopefully a little bit different. And do you get those shifts by layering or just mixing the color more? Mixing them, yep. yeah. Yeah, I just mix them. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, I noticed, um, so there are two behind me that um, there's like kind of top center, there's a really intense red that like really shines through um, on both of these paintings. And I was wondering if that's something that you think about as you're working like more vibrant colors popping forward and that's something you're playing with or if you're trying to like fight that at all. Really, I'm looking to have a complexion in, in the paintings and some will push and pull and that's okay. You know, in addition to the color, I go in and I adjust all, all of the grays too. You know, obviously we'll heighten the gray if it's a brighter color and, you know, lower it if it's darker. Um, I usually try to have them be either a value above or behind the color that's, that's occupying them. It gets to a point at the end of the process where I'm making all of those adjustments. And that can, that can take time because, you know, I'm taping them off and it has to dry and, um, yeah, so that can take months just to make all those adjustments and then sanding each, you know, um, after each um, application, constantly sanding. Uh, yeah. <laughs> With so much artwork, um, it's really hard to get the depth um, when you're looking online. But when I see them in real life, it's like you're more aware of the layers and the surface of, of them, which I think exactly. is always, always the case with art, but especially in something like this where you're really tackling that, I think. Exactly. Yeah. And these, and these paintings in particular, the surfaces are like really important. Yeah. And in a picture, you just, you know, it's hard to appreciate that. It's definitely true that in person, there's, there's definitely a, you know, a deeper level of uh, experiencing that. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit about the inspiration of the imagery, like using yeah. crosses? Back in, I want to say like 2006, I was completing a group of paintings and I wasn't sure what I should paint next. So I ended up painting a uh, grid and then I was like, all right, what if I put um, crosses in, into them? Thinking of them more as like, uh, you know, like plus symbols or something, or um, like you would see like a cross, like on a, like on a quilt. And then on that painting, I painted um, negative signs on top of it. And it, the painting ended up being called um, pros and cons, haha. -ha. And that painting sort of came in sort of unexpectedly. I was happy with it, but I didn't know what I should do with it. So I didn't paint another one like that really until probably like 2010. And that painting, um, that painting I showed at like CMCA, you know, it was in a biennial and I didn't know, but I didn't, I didn't understand it, you know? 
so I just kind of kind of held held off on it. Then in 2010, I was thinking about it, you know, and I began, you know, a group of paintings that used that painting as as a you know as a catalyst. And I painted that pretty consistently that way um, <clears throat> until like 2012. And, um, I had a show of them in Portland. So back in June, I decided to begin, you know, a new group. And I've been painting them uh, for the past year, and I've com I've completed those, and I'm and I'll be moving on now. Um, they're just <laughs> labor intensive. I don't know. I don't know how else to say it. So the last show that we had of your work um, was called Mid Coast. That work was, I would say, you know, more representational or narrative. I always think of myself more of an abstract painter than I do a representational painter. Typically, when I paint, like on those paintings that you're talking about, I have a general idea about the painting, but I'm really involved in the process and layering paint and um, building up the painting. In the paintings that were in that Midcoast show, all those paintings were arrived at in, in the process of painting. And the cross paintings, there's more of a system. There's more of a uh, template for how the paintings are made. And I, know how the template operates and what I don't know are, you know, how I'll end up at, at, at the colors and um, things like that. But with the Midcoast paintings, like I'm like entirely arriving at those paintings, each painting independently. And those are two completely different processes, I think. And I'm actually anxious to, to, um, get into that again, you know, yeah. into that process of painting. The challenge about that process is you don't ever know if you'll catch up to it or if you'll, if you'll, if you'll arrive at the painting. And there's always kind of a danger of when you're not pushing up against something, you can be chasing it and not ever catch up to it. I mean, I think a lot of people have different kind of bodies of work, different series of work, and it is sometimes, I, I feel like more for myself, it's hard to reconcile those things, but you know, it's funny when I look at other people's work, like your work, I see that they're related in that, in the way that you handle the paint and like, process and like the planning of it, you know, like, and I think that more, maybe it's like an internal thing that we all do and where you like, feel like, does this make any sense? You know, does this, <laughs> does this relate to that at all? You know, there's always this, there's always this kind of a, an expectation that will, that all our paintings will, will relate to each other. And I, I think, if I think if you're the person who's painting them, they have to. Right. So you can kind of leave leave that expectation out of it. It's tough, you know, because yeah, I don't know. It's you're trying to always make like a cohesive, you know, group and have a show of cohesive paintings. But I look at people like. Um, Catherine Bradford and Chris Martin and they're just in their painting and they don't care you know they're just involved with painting and then they hang it then they hang hang the paintings and it's and I, and and that is how the mid coast paintings happened you know those were kind of all over the place and but what tied them all together was there was 
uh, presence about them, I mm -hmm. think, that they each, each have. And I think you could tell that the same person painted them too, you know, I, I think, you know, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, I totally hear hear you about that. And and I used to be so concerned about that, you know, mm -hmm. when I was younger, you know, but I've been finding the paintings to be more successful when I don't think about that. Yeah. I think Catherine Bradford calls it um freedom painting. <laughs> like you're just free to paint whatever, you know. And it truly is about the pain and the process of painting rather than, you know, what the painting is depicting. Because in truth, you know, all painting is depicting a process, you know. So it doesn't really matter if it ends up being, you know, a painting of a tree or just paint, you know. Yeah, I think all painters are in, in their paintings, whether we try to keep ourselves out of them or not, you know. Yeah, yeah. We're in there, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know?